Welcome back to Josh's Windygrass, I mean, uh, Kentucky Bluegrass Lawn. It's been a few weeks since we last visited, so let's have a squeeze and talk about how we're going to fix up this bad boy this coming season. Back at Josh's house, as you can see, looking a little bit better this time around. Let me just show you guys quickly and then we'll talk about what we're going to be doing for the future of this place and what we're doing today as well. But as you can see, I can see a lot more Kentucky bluegrass among this lawn now. Like a couple of more significant patches here and there, still a bit of old winty grass here and there, but it is a lot more significant that um, Kentucky bluegrass than the poa now, which is great. So here's that spot that Josh sprayed, as you can see. I mean, we didn't smash it, but it does come up quite easily with that. Um, and I'll take a couple more apps to smash this stuff. I'll probably say two to three just because it's so mature, but yeah. You can see in the crown of it. Kind of. Some of it's like there's some dead leaf in there. Oh, right. And some bits. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I did get that off a bit. But yeah, Josh said it basically stunted the growth of the power that's there, um, but it hasn't killed it yet. So yeah, a couple of follow-up applications and we should be sweet with it in there. It's the way it is when it's just so mature like that. Right, so you can really tell it's you can really tell now that spring is starting to come along. Cause look at this. We are starting to get some lush sections now of this Kentucky bluegrass. Now, a lot of people have been saying, oh, how are you going to resurrect this lawn and make it look good? Well, the good thing is, is we've got a good starting point because there is Kentucky bluegrass basically everywhere. Some of it's just smaller plants, bigger plants here and there, like this is a bigger plant here. But Kentucky bluegrass is one of those awesome grasses that creeps pretty aggressively. Um, so this will start to really start to spread once the season warms up when we get some fertilizer down like we're going to today. So as I said, we're putting a fertilizer out today because our soil temps are starting to rise. Um, frost is starting to disappear here in Orange, so it's time to get yourself a fertilizer down. I mean, sometimes I wait until the first week of spring, but I'm gonna get down a little bit earlier to get this thing moving because it needs to move. But this here is Noculate, Nocu, Noculate. It's Noculate Complete, which is one of my favorite ferts of all time. It's great stuff. We use it on the golf greens at work. Um, and I use it basically all last season at home. So the back out here is looking a little bit worse for wear, as you can see. The dog's running amok. Hey, put it up. Good over here. Um, but you can see there's a couple of really dark green patches of this Kentucky Blue. And it's looking great, even like these patches over here. Um, but the reason we want to get this fertilizer down now is to get these lighter patches in here where well, there's Kentucky bluegrass all through here and all throughout the whole lawn But we need to start getting that to grow quite a bit It's actually looking quite hungry and ready for a feed So it's time to get some down as I said because their temps are bumping up So inoculate is a biologically enhanced fertilizer and you're probably thinking what the crap is a biologically enhanced fertilizer So basically it's got microbes in the actual fertilizer itself. They're actually frozen um, just so it keeps the longevity of the microbes in the fertilizer and they are put in the fertilizer basically to help feed your soil naturally basically. The great thing about soil microbes is they're going to help consume organic matter. So basically your thatch in your soil and the broken down grass clippings on top of the soil as well. Oh, that dog's wolfing at me. <laughs> get, get out of it. <laughs> it's going to be great to help um, hold nutrients in the soil quite a few tests that they've done um, at the University of Florida, I'm pretty sure it is. A um, few articles online, we can see how using the um, microbes that inoculate to actually help prevent disease in your lawn. They try that with Dollar Spot and Fusarium, I'm pretty sure as well. So yeah, it's really great to help with disease resistance and also help with, you know, just having a hardier lawn on top of that. So another couple of quick key benefits are that it's gonna help with your nutrient uptake in your soil and stop nutrient leaching as well. So leaching basically means that, um, say when you put your fertilizers down, you get heaps of rains or you get, you know, you just irrigate too much. Your um, actual nutrients in your soil come out and leach out of your soil itself. And sometimes it can be when you over fertilize, it leaches out because you just got too much there. But having those microbes in there are really gonna help contain it in the soil. And you're gonna get more nutrient uptake because you're adding those microbes alongside it as well. Another key thing is that it's also gonna help with sodium displacement. So soils can be salty and that's not gonna be great for your lawn salts, just not good for it. So those microbes are also gonna help with the salts in your soil as well. So there's actually quite a lot of different microbes in this fertilizer itself. I could list them for ages and go on about it, but I'll probably bore you guys just a little bit. Um, so I'm gonna put an article, I'm gonna link it 
to the product on my website you guys, so you guys can read up on it yourself. Look into a little bit more um, because I could talk heaps and I'd probably go in one ear and out the other side. So I reckon it's, I recommend that you read this article and have a look at what's actually inoculate and how awesome it is. Also, I forgot to mention, um, Noculate's also awesome because it has humic acid in there, which is great. So it's really gonna help with our CEC in our soil, which is our cation exchange capacity. So we're just gonna have more nutrient uptake and gonna make nutrients more available in there as well, as well as that helping out on the microbe side of things as well. But we're also gonna have some wetting agent in there. So it's got a granular wetting agent included in this as well. So it's gonna help with the hydrophobic soil. Um, I wouldn't replace like a liquid wetting agent with this just because it's in your fertilizer, but it's great to really stop that hydrophobic soil happening in between your applications as well of your wetting agent. So, mate, a couple of extra things in there as well, which is why this fertilizer is priced a little bit higher than other fertilizers because of the humic acid, the wetting agent, the microbes that are actually mixed in with the fertilizer, as well as your MPK and your um, macronutrients as well on top of that. And it is um, a mini prill as well. So I think it's a 75 SGN, which is your prill size. So it's very small. So it's actually a greens grade fertilizer. Anyway, we should do something because Josh is staring at me. <laughs> Get it. Right, so this is a little bit of a fix up job, this project here, but that's okay. It'd be good to show you guys the journey of how we're gonna, what we're gonna do with this. But I tell you what, by looking at it right now, it really does need a top dress just to fill in some of those bare areas. So we've got some area for that Kentucky bluegrass to creep into. We're not gonna worry about aerating it because the soil's still pretty soft um, from when we brought in the excavator and I think we had a rotary hole as well. Oh, bunker rake, we had the bunker rake, which roughed up the soil quite a bit. Um, we don't really wanna rough the soil up now to promote any more weeds coming up or any more winning grass. <laughs> but yeah, after this fertilize, we really should see this Kentucky bluegrass start to thrive and actually start to creep sideways. Um, Josh will probably do a top dress in the next couple of weeks once we are a little bit warmer in soil temps. Um, our day temps at the moment are at about 15 degrees, 10 to 15 degrees. Um, but next week we're heading into 20s and then it sort of will stay like that from there on in. Josh just kicking stuff at me. Why do this? But yeah, that's the plan. Just sort of like a renovation without obviously the core aeration. We'll just top dress it, fertilize it, keep on top of it with products um, like wetting agents and a liquid fur program as well. What, mate? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, dealing with weeds at the moment, we're not going to worry too much about it. There's not many broadleaf weeds, mostly just the old winter grass, um, which we'll try to get the Kentucky blue dust grass to actually grow a bit more before we start trying to tackle this winter grass too much. But we are going to use power check. Um, here and there um, Just on like a rotation sort of a thing. So but every 21 days we'll start applying it once the Kentucky bluegrass Is a little bit stronger and a bit healthier as well after this foot and just from doing these couple of things as well as proper watering um, mowing regularly um, And just basically maintenance this lawn should really start to kick into gear and start to grow nicely We should have a pretty full looking lawn. I reckon Definitely by the end of the season. I reckon we'll see a huge difference in the next two months easily especially with kentucky bluegrass um if this was my rye grass i would be overseeding it but since it is um kentucky bluegrass we're just going to ride it out and see how it goes Right, so Josh is just going to finish that off. He's given the back a little bit of an extra hit um, because it is that so much, well, it just looks a bit sadder. It doesn't get as much sun, so we're just going to really try to kick it into gear. But yeah, I really believe we're going to fix this lawn up in the next, I reckon in a month, we're going to see a huge difference. Just have to put some furt down and the soil temps bumping up. Um, but make sure you guys follow along on this project. Um, I'm going to make a little playlist for this so you guys can jump along if you're only just watching this video now and it's, you know, a month or two after we shot it. Um, so I'm gonna to try to come here weekly, if not fortnightly, just to show you guys the progress of this lawn, how the fertilizer is working. And yeah, we'll go from there. But that inoculate stuff is great. You don't have to water it in straight away. You can water it in like that night 
if you want to because it's non-burning so it's really really good just make sure you don't put it down when there's any dew around or you've had rain because you know it can cause a little bit of burn if you do it then just put it down when the ground is dry um, and yeah just water it in with about six I'd say about 10 ml of water afterwards and you'll be right all right, I'm gonna wrap the video up there, but thanks guys so much for watching. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, keep your eye out on this project. Looking forward to seeing how it goes. <laughs> I'm actually, I'm excited to see how it goes. But yeah, you guys have a good week. Check this out, Josh finally got himself a real mower. Found it in Bathurst, believe it or not, which is awesome. Same as my Rover 45, better nick though than mine. Got it for a really good price. Um, but shout out to Real Solutions for giving us this front roller. It's schmick as so shiny.